Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match cast. This time we're going to be on Tomb of Heroes, watching J Raccoon fight Nerd Pride. J Raccoon in the west side of the map, Nerd Pride in the east side of the map. Nerd Pride's a newer player, not actually seen any games from him. And J Raccoon, of course, is J Raccoon. He's played this game a lot. So, Nerd Pride starting with an importer and three RPs. This is on standard vanilla Akron version 1.4.0.1. .1. Not any experimental mods or anything like that, like the last game. So Jericoon going for Grekem. Of course we saw Nerd Pride going for CISO. Actually, Nerd Pride only getting is he only getting two RPs? He should be getting a third, because he can afford a third. Yeah, he is getting a third. Okay, so he is definitely going for a standard opener with quick economy and importers. On a map like Tomb of Heroes, I'm not sure that's the best way to go, because this map does kind of encourage the use of more of an economic start rather than worrying about really quick military. So I think in this case he might be not in the best position. I think he might be going a bit too fast on this, but he could pull it off. I he might be able to pull it off. I don't think it worked very well on this map. It's just it's fairly large. It's a large rush distance. So focusing on economy is very safe strategy, which is exactly what Jericoon is doing. He is getting his economy set up, getting his resource processor set up with his opening octos. And we'll be able to very quickly get enough money to get more Octos and more RPs and all that. While sending one of the Octos out to scout out Nerd Pride. Well, Nerd Pride is sending out Special Ops and Marine. Which is rather aggressive for a scouting move. He only really needs to send one. But still, it's not a bad move. It's just not strictly necessary. Anyway, getting another RP as well. His importer building up and... And at this point, he still has another minute and a half before he starts wasting time, because when he's full on reserves. So he could be fine for now. It's just still a bit of an early importer. And it's back at the 40 second mark, so Jericho just setting up his economy, and... Possibly changing his scouting? Yeah, he's moving his Octo back that he used for scouting. I mean, Nerd Pride... Both players knowing what the other one is playing. Though Nerd Pride's scouting force is able to get further along able to get rid of that Octo and then move straight into Jerrican's base. Jerrican actually might have... He has a bit of trouble to deal with that's coming up fairly soon. However, he probably should be fine. He'll have a defender's advantage. He'll have more Octos coming up in the meantime. So it won't be a problem. And right now, Nerd Pride is about to get to the point where his importer is no longer going to be getting reserves. He might want to build up a Marine or a Special Ops or something. Just a, It's a small amount of LC, but it will make sure he's not wasting his reserves. And he's doing exactly that, building another Special Ops. Jericho, on the other hand, not building more Octos yet, and where is that Special Ops Marine team? They're right down here. That's where they are. So yeah, this Special Ops Marine team is going to be a bit of a hassle if they're able to get through. But it looks like... Is Nerf Pride just patrolling with them? No, he is definitely moving in. So one of the Marines having scouted through in the future, not fighting or anything, just scouting around, seeing what Jericho has built. So knowing what he has, Jericoon is still building up his economy. So both players are going for economy. Like I said, neither player, which is good. This is what this map is built to be like. So neither player is trying to go for military very heavily. But Nerd Pride is definitely much more aggressive. Jericoon, I'm not sure if he's focusing on tech or what. I think both players are kind of distracted by talking to each other. And apparently Nerd Pride did not mean to move that Marine back, however, that wasn't a bad idea, regardless. He's... Well, getting his Special Ops and Marine back up, so he should be able to attack, but I think Jericoon... Like I said, Jericoon doesn't really have much of a problem dealing with this, he just needs to build a couple Lockdos, and those infantry will just melt away. So here we go, Nerd Pride is building up some infantry. I'm not sure if he's going to be building up a factory very soon, he does have the resources to do it. But no, he's continuing to build more RPs, getting up the first QP RP, and probably should build a factory fairly soon, because Jericoon could start attacking any time now. He could start building up a military of his own and just go for an assault. It's not terribly likely, but it's still possible. It is sort of the point where I would start building up military just as a defense. But maybe Nerd Pride's not too scared. I mean, he's... He doesn't have much to deal with yet, but Jericoon is getting a couple Octos up, probably once again for resources. But now that he does have a progenerating Octo, he can start building Seppies and Faros, thus getting a Reef, thus getting advanced structures, and then a Spire, and then from there, air units. So he would be able to start doing an Assault fairly soon. 
And Nerd Pride, is he going for an attack? No, from his point of view, he is trying to attack this natural expansion, seeing if there's anything there, which there isn't. But he has not gone for an attack on the main base, so Jericoon currently not being attacked at all. And same with Nerd Pride, Jericoon has not actually gone for any aggressive maneuvers as well, though I think it's because Nerd Pride is a newer player and Jericoon is probably going a bit easy on him. So, Nerd Pride sending out more special ops straight into J Raccoon's north side of his base. Not straight into J Raccoon's base, mind you. Just the north side there. And J Raccoon, on the other hand, he's going to have to deal with some coming in from the south. These two here, some marine special ops here coming from the south, are going to be a bit of a problem. But probably not too much of a problem. And J Raccoon getting up his two. He has two reefs now, so this won't be any problem at all. And Octopod coming up as well at the 4 minute mark, or 455 mark. Nearly the five minute mark. So very late in the game. Like I said, Tomb of Heroes is a map that does encourage early economy, that does not encourage early military focus. And as a result, we see exactly what we're seeing now, which is fully intended. Now, Nerd Pride, on the other hand, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't built any factories yet. I'm actually a bit worried about the fact that he hasn't built any factories yet. Because he should have built one at least a minute ago. Like he should go back to around here and just build a factory. He's gonna need it. He's gonna need to have the units that they that it produces. Especially dealing with the octopods, not gonna be able to deal with that with infantry. Infantry are basically countered by it. Going for a proxy armory, this is a really risky move. I mean, large enough numbers he might be able to deal with this, but no. Uh, Seppi and Faro coming in, they're probably coming in to regenerate. They will be seeing what's going on. The octopod coming down here to deal with these infantry, getting rid of the marine. We'll be getting rid of the special ops and done. And the armory being spotted very quickly as well. So Nerd Pride losing the initiative in this assault. Very unfortunate for him, but like I said, he really does need to build up his main base a bit more. He needs to build a factory his main base. Not focus on armories. I noticed, actually, something I've noticed a lot with newer players is that they have a tendency to build a lot of armories and not tech up. And I'm a little bit curious as to why. So if any of you are new players in Akron watching this video, please post in the comments. Let me know why it is that you guys build armories and not factories or macrofabs or... I guess it's really because of the production structure for, for CISO. But I'm really curious because it's something I've noticed from new players after the beta stage, after the release of the game, is that they always build armories. Like their first couple games, they're only building armories and importers. They aren't building any factories or macrofabs. And it makes me think that there's something clearly wrong with the way the game is being taught, that the game is being presented, that it's making players think that there's no other production structures. So yeah, please let me know if there's something there that's make, giving that impression. Anyway, coming from, <coughs> sorry. coming from the north, we see that Nerd Pride still getting rebuffed by this Octopod here. Another Octopod coming as well, so Jericoon definitely well prepared for this. While Ground Units, even with that upgrade, Ground Units does improve the firepower of Marines. Not Special Ops, by the way, only Marines and Mechs. So, having no Marines here, it's kind of useless. I'm not sure exactly why he went for it at this point. If he gets a macrofab on top of this, which he could do, then he'd be able to get Twin Mars, which would be effective at this point, but he's not doing that. He's... Oh, he's getting a factory! Okay, never mind. He is actually building a factory, so he's not just building armories. Oh, good. But yeah, he could have afforded that factory at least two minutes ago. I'm... and I mean, two chronal minutes ago. He could have afforded it around here. I don't know why he waited this long. But he is going to be getting it fairly soon from the looks of it, and there we go. So, factory being built... Nerd Pride does have that coming up, and J Raccoon also has. Looks like another Sebi Faro pair, another progening pair. Actually, two progening pairs in the looks of it. Well, two Sebi Faro pairs. But that is the common way for Gregon to expand, is to send a Sebi and a Faro out, have them progenerate, and then go. And it looks like the Octopod, once again, doing the job it is meant to do, dealing with these special ops, dealing with symmetry. And even moving in and not attacking all the time, it's still able to deal with them, though very close call. 14 health out of 300, that's that's really cutting it. I'm not sure exactly why it went that far down, why it was just moving and not attacking the entire time. However, in this case, I think it's not going to make it. I think this iteration it's going to die. It's hard to say, but it looks like it's not going to be able to last. The special ops, special ops are very powerful. The infantry have a lot of raw attack power. But they lack range and speed, which is sort of the trade-off. If you can teleport them in, or put them in a position where your opponent just teleports into them, it works very well. But otherwise, it's very difficult to get through vehicle range and vehicle speed in order to be able to get in. 
because they don't have a lot of health, and thus they don't have a, they can't survive long enough to get that far. And here we go, two factors coming in, and oh, what was he building? I can't tell. Anyway, Jerakoon is coming with an Octopod main base at the 917 mark, so two minutes up from where we are now. Lancer's being built up by Nerpride. Good idea. Definitely worth doing, although it's a little bit late at this point. If he had done that a couple minutes ago, it would have been great, but right now, since Advanced Rush is up, it's just a matter of time until Aspire comes up. With that, Sepipods will be able to tear apart the Lancers without much issue, though for cost, you can get a lot more Lancers than you can Sepipods. So, Nerpride could outnumber J. Raccoon Sepipods, and at this point, he appears poised to. He's also getting a lot more RP in his main base, so definitely getting a pretty strong economy. He actually does have J. Raccoon beat as far as economy goes, though J. Raccoon's expansions will definitely n narrow that divide and probably put it in J. Raccoon's favor quite shortly. Especially since J. Raccoon is taking over Nerpride's natural expansion, so Nerpride's gonna have a hard time getting out of his main base at this point and being able to construct beyond that. I kept maybe taking Jericho's natural expansion or one of these southern expansions that's behind these proxy factories. But beyond that, not really much you can do with that. So, Octopod coming in here, dealing with the Marines coming out, getting rid of one of the importers, gonna tear apart that armory very shortly. Sorry, that was a special ops. But tearing apart this armory very shortly, more special ops coming in. I can see why he's going for special ops. They are definitely stronger. They have better anti-ground weaponry and they're a lot tougher than Marines. However, even with that, the Octopod's not going to go down. It's not going to go down quickly, so this army's going down. But at the same time, Lancer's coming in to Jericoon's base at 10-18 mark. And this is from Rymark's point of view. Jericoon actually is 30 seconds down from here. So his Lancer's doing quite a bit of damage, but Jericoon will have time to prepare for this. But he does not... He's not getting any Seppies. Why is he not getting Seppies? This is exactly what he needs to get. He has, he has to do it actually a minute down from here. Go back to the 9-minute mark down here and build some Seppies. That's what he needs to do. That will get rid of these Lancers, no problem, but he is... Why is he not doing that? He's going back. Is he doing this? He is! He is, in fact, getting Seppies. Okay, good. So he will be able to help... At least, should be able to get rid of the Lancers. He's also getting his economy very strong, getting a lot more Q-Plasma. I'm a bit surprised he doesn't have any Spire yet. A little bit shocking at this point, he just doesn't have that. But the Octopod dealing quite a bit of damage to Nerd Pride's base, so really just a matter of time. But with these Lancers coming in here, that's at, at the very least a good distraction. One Lancer's going down, another Lancer going down as well. So these Seppies are doing exactly what they were meant to do. And the Autobot's still dealing a lot of damage to that armory. So J. Raccoon, regardless of Nerpride's assault, is tearing apart Nerpride's base, slowly but surely. And there's not much that's being done against it. But more Lancers coming in. I'm a little bit surprised that's always... No, he's building ATHCs now. Okay, good. About to say, it's a little bit all he's building is Lancers, but with ATHCs, that is going to be some effective support. However, these Lancers have got to be careful. Seppies have really good splash damage and, or splash radius. So the Lancers are too close together. Of course, they're going to take a lot of damage altogether. And that would kind of defeat the purpose of using that. So these Seppies are going to be essentially deterring these Lancers from going into the base, but with the ATHC support, that should help. Might not necessarily do it though, but if you manage to distract the Seppies and possibly kill them with the ATCs, then the Lancer should be able to go in from another angle and deal with the base. But no, he's going for it. it's just a straight attack. The Lancers are not that well spread out. These ones over here are going to be taking a lot of damage together, but the Seppies going down too quickly. Not enough Seppies were built to deal with this. Jericoon not quite defending himself well enough, and the Lancer's able to tear apart everything in his base. Once that Octopod is down, everything else is going to go down with it. And there's the last Seppi, the one that was in Progen mode, going down shortly as well. Jericoon. Three seconds down from here, but still not able to build up anything for it. I think he might be trying to build another Seppi, but he is... Now he's mainly focused on these proxy bases. Now, of course, Nerpride's main base has been torn to shreds, but he still has a resource base, and he still has these factories here, and those are his main points of focus. That's where he's getting a lot of units, and that's where he's getting all of these Lancers tearing everything to shreds. Yeah, this is... I think J.R. is done at this point. Nicely done with the Lancers, though. I have not seen Lancers in a while, and I'm quite glad to see them. They're a good unit. I just, I just don't see them very often. No one really builds them much, and they're not something that comes up, so... Glad to see them. Hope to see more of them. But I'm just a little bit surprised that they've only recently been showing up. It's a little bit bizarre. Anyway, Jericoon, however, does still have a bit of a chance getting a dome, getting his chronoporting as well on 
A Cosly Independent Base, so this could do it. He has a lot of Q-Plasma, but he's going to need to either have a two dozen or so Seppies or a bunch of Seppi Pods. And he has neither. But he does have... Like, the Scrapporting coming up could still be effective. He does get... He could get the Seppies... However, Corona Porting being as expensive as it is, it's going to be hard to build up those numbers. One Faro, that's Faro, not Seppi. Well, Faro and Faro. Getting a Spire, however, this will allow him to get the Seppi Paws, and that will be much more effective. But, yeah, as Nerdbard points out, he is kind of dead in the water. Well, he's not quite dead in the water. He could get a mech. He could get a mech and use that to rebuild an armory, and then use that to rebuild a marine, and then build up a base from there. So he's not totally dead in the water, and that's just a good tip. I don't know how well how well or widely that's known, that you can use mechs to build up. Probably not very well known at all, actually. But yeah, you can use mechs to rebuild bases. So if you're completely dead in the water, but you only have factories left, then you can use a mech to get yourself back up into the game. If you only have macrofabs left, you are, however, completely done. There is no way to recover from just macrofabs. But from just factories, yeah, you can build marines. Or sorry, build mechs, build armories, and then build marines, and then use those to build everything else. I should say armories and importers. Both of them can be built by mechs. And I think Jerrican is about to mention that to Nerd Pride right now. But Nerd Pride does have... I don't know, mentioned, not mention that. I might just mean a couple secrets in terms of he has a hidden base in the very center of the map that's about to chronoport back a bunch of units and eliminate everything that Nerd Pride had done. Although, everything's a major exaggeration with... He has a dozen Lancers here. Actually, no, he has nine Lancers here. So quite a few. So he won't be hurting too badly, really. Eating these two hidden bases, it's not going to be that much. Jericho was still pounded quite heavily. And mechs coming in here. Not sure if Nerf is going to be realizing from here he can actually build up armories and importers, but at the very least he can build macrofabs and move forward. So it is something. Of course, mechs being the only unit that Caesar can build without reserves, so new players will still at least build the mechs, even if they don't realize they can actually use them for rebuilding their entire base. I'm a bit surprised that... Okay, Nerpride is not scouting especially well. Okay, he is going to find one of them. He is going to find one of the secret bases, but he's not scouting especially well. He's The center base... Like The thing is, it's always good. Always, 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 always scout near... Okay. First rule, always scout near bases. Always scout near, near where there are crates. The second rule, always scout in between where there are crates. Like, this is kind of both, but always scout in between as well as near. Just because those are the two places that people will hide units. Now obviously that kind of accounts for the entire map, and that is sort of what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is prioritize known bases first, and then prioritize areas that are just as far in between the bases as possible. And then just check around everywhere else that's remaining. But yeah, at this point, Nerd Pride is not scouting particularly efficiently, and he's not seeing this chronoport happen. He's... Uh, I believe he is aware of it. I'm pretty sure the alerts were on during the game. And he does see it. He does have his ATCs coming through and realizing there is a base here. So his Lancers will be coming in to destroy it. So Jericoon now going down, losing the dome in an instant. Losing the Sepipod as well. He needed many Sepipods to deal with these Lancers, not just the one. Many. So at this point, he's losing everything. So that is probably going to be game. I don't see any way out of this for J Raccoon, really. Still, valiant effort, I gotta say, I am impressed. Just, that's all that really is to it. There's not much more to say. He's This base is done. And that's all J Raccoon had. So, very nicely done by Nerd Pride. Very nice use of Lancers. And I'm a little bit curious how much J Raccoon was going soft on Nerd Pride just because he's a newer player and how much he was actually trying really pushing hard like he would normally. But yeah, it's certainly as as with any RCS game, numbers are very important. Never worth denying the importance of numbers of units, even if you have the proper counters, if you only have one of them versus half a dozen of the units they counter. And especially since the Lancers are actually good against air as well, it's kind of tricky to deal with. So yeah, Jericoon has pretty much lost this. So I hope you enjoyed watching that, and 
once he surrenders, that will be game, and we can move on to the third cast. So, that's about it. Lancer's just tearing everything apart. Looking pretty. I'm a bit surprised. Why is Jericho not surrendering? We're looking from Jericho's point of view, by the way. We were, anyway. Now we're back to Nerdfry's point of view. But we were looking from Jericho's point of view, and... Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised exactly why he is not surrendering at this point. It's really kind of bizarre, actually. Why is Jericho not surrendering? Jericho? Jericho's not in the channel. He's not watching this cast in the moment, so I do not know why he was surrendering. Well, that's unfortunate. So, anyway. Once we, if we figure out why he's not surrendering, that would help. I mean, unless the replay borked at the last minute, but I think J Raccoon's done. No, J Raccoon is totally done. I don't know what. I'm not sure what's exactly supposed to be going on from here. Like I said, I'm suspecting that something has gone wrong and something's borked. But I'm not sure what it is. But at this point, it looks like J Raccoon has lost this game. Yeah, he's he's not in the map at all. Not sure what exactly is going on here. From J Raccoon's point of view, there's only a small amount of damage being dealt in the unplayable past right after this chrono port and beyond that and probably wasn't the chrono port probably was just the assault at the initial defense against that assault the lancer assault and there's not much coming else beyond that so i think that's going to be game so i'll just end this now and move on to the third cast so if you enjoyed that and be back shortly